You're gonna end up thanking me for this video at some point in your life. Today's video is all about bad habits. How to prevent them, and for some of y'all, how to unlearn them. So, this is a video that's mostly for my beginner and intermediate drummers out there. Advanced drummers, you should know all this stuff already. But you can stick around and watch this anyway, because I'm cool. So I'm going to give you five of the most common bad habits that I've seen amongst inexperienced drummers. Hopefully you'll take note of these, cut them off right at the choke point. Because some of these will have some long-term effects if you do them for long enough. So hopefully, you know, take note of these now and just stay away from them. So here we go. Preventable bad habit number one. Setting up your kit, for lack of a better term, goofy. Now I don't want to blame any beginner or intermediate drummers out there. Because typically, you know, when you first get your set of drums, you're all excited, you just set them up throw the pieces on and just start swinging the sticks. But you should take the time to find out how you can set this kit up according to your body type. Now I want to avoid using the word wrong here because you can do what you want. But fact of the matter is there are efficient ways to set up your kit and inefficient ways to set it up. And sometimes these inefficient ways can lead to some problems later. So your snare might be two feet off the ground, might be at some kind of a super weird angle. You know, you're, you got the Mickey Mouse toms going on here where there's a foot and a half between them. Your cymbals might be too high and your hi-hat too low, like whatever. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong with a setup. And sometimes, you know, in the case of, for instance, your snare drum. If your snare drum is set too low and it's at too steep of an angle, you're forced to approach it at a sort of weird way and over a long period of time, it can affect all of this going on right here. So you can avoid issues down the line if you just take the time and learn how to set your kit up ergonomically so that it fits your body type. You can play much more efficiently. The more efficient your setup is, the better you're gonna end up sounding. Now, if you take a look at my sweet setup right here, you notice I got a lot of stuff on it, but it's compact, it's tight, right? Everything is nice and close. I can stay right here, pick up the sticks, hit everything I need to hit without working at all. So if you take a look from the ground up, you'll notice my snare drum is lined up with my floor tom. My two toms are exactly parallel beside each other. There's not a lot of space at all between them. My cymbals are no higher than shoulder height. It's the perfect setup for my body. Now I have a video that talks about kit setup in full detail. I'll put that link in the description box so you can check that out later. But no matter what size you are, you can set your kit up to fit you. So if you just take a few minutes in the beginning, find out how you can do that, set up your kit perfectly for your body type, trust me, the benefits will be great down the road. Bad habit number two. A lot of y'all watching right now are sitting too low. Now this is a very physical instrument that requires a lot of small repetitive movements. If you do enough repetitive movements the wrong way over time, it's like a slow drip. It starts to add up, right? You're gonna start to deal with knee problems, back problems, hip issues, stuff like that. If you're used to sitting too low, over a number of years, it starts to take a strain on the body. So the earlier you figure out the correct height to sit, no matter how tall or how short you are on the drums, the better. And the only thing that you really need to remember is that your knees or your, your thighs, I should say, should be on a slight slope downwards. As long as you remember that, you'll be fine. If you're sitting on the kit and your thighs are pointing up like this, you gotta adjust that seat. There's a lot of drummers out there dealing with some chronic pain just from sitting too low. So learn that early. And don't be afraid to invest in a really good seat. You can get some nice hydraulic ones out there. Um, there's some super padded ones. The one that I use is from a company called Ahead. It's called a Spinal Glide. This thing is great. It's a back saver. It's got a little channel up the middle. 
takes the pressure off your spine while you're sitting for long periods. I'm gonna leave a link for that thrown in the description box. I'm a Sweetwater affiliate, so you can click on that link, head on over there and check it out. But yeah, don't be afraid to invest a little coin in a really good drum throne. Bad habit number three. This is the worst out of all of them, man. I should have started with this one. Holding the sticks wrong. I cannot even stress how crucial it is to learn how to hold the sticks properly. If you don't take the time in the beginning to learn proper match grip, proper traditional grip, whatever you choose to use, if you don't take the time to learn how to do that so that you know how to use these muscles the correct way, you're gonna open yourself up to a whole lot of hand issues. Having a poor grip while you're swinging the sticks repeatedly, hitting stuff over and over again, that can result in a lot of pain. I had to learn that lesson myself when I was younger, especially in this hand. I was having a ton of unbearable pain in the palm of my hand just because of poor grip. This is something that you need to research. There is no shortage of information on proper grip, especially here on my channel. So you need to take advantage of that, take the time and learn how to use your wrist, how to use your fingers, how all of this stuff works here so that you can play efficiently, smoothly and without pain. So make sure that you learn proper grip. Bad habit, horrendous habit, unforgivable habit number four. Ignoring the metronome. It is astonishing to me, still, how many drummers still don't practice with a metronome. The number of drummers out there that have been playing 10, 15, 20 years even, and their meter still sucks, is crazy. Couldn't hold a steady tempo if their family was being held hostage. The core of our job as drummers is to keep steady and consistent time while we're doing everything else on the kit. You have to be able to groove, fill, phrase, solo, all of that stuff consistently with a certain degree of accuracy. And the only way to build that ability is to work consistently with a metronome. The key really is to rely a lot less on this and build it in here, right? Hence the t-shirt. But in order to build that internal clock, you need to work with a reference, something that's gonna keep time for you so that you know how to play all of your subdivisions around the quarter note. So in the beginning stages, at least for the first three years, everything that you're doing on the kit should be done to a metronome. Now I do have a video on my channel, actually I have a few, but there's a good one on there about how to develop rock solid timing. It shows you the most efficient way to use a metronome when you're practicing on the kit so you're not just spinning your wheels, but it'll teach you everything that you need to know to develop good, consistent human time. But if you're aspiring to be a serious drummer and you don't have a good metronome app on your phone, you might as well go buy an accordion or something. And then the final bad habit, at least in this top five, not protecting your ears. And if you got an electronic set at home, you're all set. You can just throw in the headphones, control your volume, you're good to go. But if you're practicing regularly on acoustic drums, you should be using some type of ear protection. It's just a really good idea, man. Your ears are precious. You're gonna be using them throughout your whole drumming career. So you might as well take care of them from the start. So there are several types of ear protection available. My favorite ones right now are these D-Buds. These are really cool. They're super simple and they're actually adjustable. They have this little slider on the side here. It's almost like a natural sort of volume reduction from minus 12 to minus 24 dB, which is actually pretty cool. And they're really comfortable. They come on this little strap, throw them around your neck, boom, stick them in your ears. Your drums actually sound really good through these. But, I mean, there are other types you can get, just regular 
foam earplugs. You can get the headset type earphones, but you should be protecting your ears when you're sitting on a kid, especially if you're practicing for a couple hours at a time. But yeah, I'll leave the link to these D buds in the description box. So you can go check those out for yourself. These are probably the most comfortable version of ear protection that I've used yet. Great at rehearsals too. But whatever you decide to go with, make sure you're protecting your ears. So those are my top five preventable bad habits. If you're an experienced drummer watching right now, you got some other bad habits that you want to drop into the comment section to add to the conversation, go ahead on and do that. Help these youngins out. We're all just one big community here, just all here to help each other out. Thanks for watching this video, but before you go, I know you've been digging this t-shirt the entire time. You can get one. This is a beatdown exclusive. This is part of my merch collection. Link will be in the description box. If you feel like supporting the channel, picking up some merch is a really good way to do it. So go ahead, grab your two or three of them on the way out. Share this video if you dig it. Like, subscribe. See you next video.